What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to walk through how to configure security settings for a small wireless network. For the CompTIA Tech Plus exam, understanding how to secure a wireless network is essential. So by the end of this video, you'll know how to configure key settings like changing the server set identifier, changing the default password, and understanding the difference between encrypted and unencrypted networks, including open networks, pre-shared key networks, and the different wireless security standards such as WPA, WPA2, and WPA3. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So one of the first things you should do when configuring a wireless network is to change the SSID. So what is an SSID? Well, that stands for service set identifier. And this is simply the name of your wireless network. It's what users see when they search for available Wi-Fi networks on their devices. And the SSID is used to differentiate your network from others in the area. So why should you change the SSID? So by default, most wireless routers come with a standard SSID like Netgear or Linksys, and keeping the default SSID is a security risk because attackers can easily identify the brand of router you're using, which may give them information about possible vulnerabilities. So changing the SSID, this adds a layer of obscurity. Now, while it won't stop a determined hacker, it prevents your network from becoming an easy target. So this is how you go about changing the SSID. So first you want to log into your router's web-based configuration page. And this is usually done by typing the router's IP address like 192.168.1.1 into a web browser. Then you want to enter the admin credentials, and these are often found on the router itself or in its user manual. Then you want to navigate to the wireless settings section, and this is where you'll see the option to change the SSID. And then you want to choose a unique SSID that doesn't give away personal information or the router's make and model. And then you want to save your settings and reconnect devices using the new network name. So by changing the SSID, you essentially reduce your network's visibility to potential attackers. Another critical step in securing your wireless network is to change the default password. So why is changing the default password important? Well, most routers, they come with a default admin username and password like admin admin or admin password. And these default credentials are widely known and are often listed in online databases, making it easy for attackers to gain access. And once an attacker has access to your router's admin page, they can change your settings, monitor network traffic, and even lock you out of your own network. So how do you actually go about changing the default password? Well, after you log into your router's admin page, you want to go to the administration or security section. You want to change both the admin username and password to something more secure. You want to create a strong password that should include a mix of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers and special characters, and it should be at least 12 characters long. And then you want to save your settings. So changing the default password, this will ensure that your router's configuration settings are protected. Again, unauthorized access. Next, let's discuss the difference between encrypted and unencrypted networks. So let's talk about an unencrypted network, which is also known as an open network. So an open network, this does not require a password to connect and anyone within range can connect to your Wi-Fi. While open networks are convenient, they are insecure because the data transmitted between the user's device and the router is not encrypted. This means that anyone within range can potentially intercept and view your data, including sensitive information like passwords and personal details. And then we have what is called an encrypted network. So encrypted networks, they require a password and data transmitted over the network is protected using encryption protocols, which scramble the data so that it cannot be easily read by attackers. And there are several types of encryption protocols you should be familiar with. First one is called WPA, the other one's called WPA2, and then you have what's called WPA3. And we're going to break down each of these encryption methods in a second. But before we do, let's talk about a pre-shared key. The pre-shared key or the PSK model, this is used in home or small business networks, and it is very simple to configure. But what exactly is a PSK? So in a PSK model, the network uses a shared password to authenticate devices. This means all users must know the same password to connect to the network. Now, how you go about setting up PSK encryption? Well, in your router's wireless settings, you'll see options for encryption types such as WPA, WPA2, or WPA3. You want to select the option for PSK 
WPSK, which is also referred to as WPA-PSK or WPA2-PSK. Then you want to enter a strong, unique password that users will need to connect to the network, and then you save your settings. So PSK encryption, this is easy to set up, but keep in mind that all users, they share the same password, which can be a security risk if the password is leaked or shared with unauthorized users. Now let's talk about the different wireless encryption standards, which are WPA, WPA2, and WPA3. So WPA, this stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access. And WPA, this was introduced as a temporary fix for weaknesses in what is called WEP or WEP, which stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy. And it uses what is called TKIP or Temporal Key Integrity Protocol to improve security. However, WPA is now considered insecure by modern standards and is not recommended for use in most cases. Then we have what is called WPA2 or Wi-Fi Protected Access 2. And this became the standard for wireless security in 2004 and is still widely used today. It uses AES or Advanced Encryption Standard, which provides encryption that is highly secure. And WPA2-PSK, this is the most common setup in home networks and offers a good balance of security and usability. So if your router supports WPA2, this will be the most recommended setting for your users. And then we have WPA3 or Wi-Fi Protected Access 3. And this is the newest and most secure wireless encryption standard that was introduced in 2018. It offers a stronger encryption with individualized data encryption, meaning even if a password is compromised, it's much harder for an attacker to intercept data. Also, WPA3 improves security for public open networks by using what is called opportunistic wireless encryption, which encrypts connections even without a password. So. If your router and devices support WPA3, then that will be the best choice for your enhanced security. And now let's walk through the process of configuring your wireless network for maximum security. So you want to access your router's admin page. So open a web browser and enter your router's IP address. And typically it's going to be something like 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1. You want to log in using the admin credentials and then change those immediately if they are still set to the default. Next, you want to change the SSID. So navigate to the wireless settings section and change the SSID to a unique name and avoid using personal information in the SSID. Then you want to set up your encryption. So you want to go to the wireless security section. You want to select either WPA2-PSK or WPA3-PSK for encryption. Then you want to create a strong, complex password for your network. And if your devices support WPA3, you want to select this for better protection. If not, then roll with WPA2 because it is still secure for most small networks. Then after that, you want to change the admin password. So in the administration or security section, change the router's default admin password to something strong and unique. And then you want to save and reboot the router. So after making these changes, save your settings and reboot the router if necessary. And then ensure that all devices reconnect using the new SSID and password. All right, so securing a small wireless network requires a few essential steps. So changing the SSID, updating the password, and configuring strong encryption like WPA2 or WPA3. By taking these steps, you protect your network from unauthorized access and ensure that your data remains private and secure. Also remember, open networks or older encryption protocols like WPA are not recommended due to their vulnerabilities. Now, I want to thank you for watching this video, and you should feel confident configuring security settings for a small wireless network. And this knowledge will not only help you on the CompTIA Tech Plus exam, but it'll also help you out in real world scenarios when setting up your home or business Wi-Fi. Now, with all of that being said, let's do some check on learning. So the first question is, what is the primary reason for changing the default SSID on a wireless network? Is it to increase the signal strength on the network? Is it to prevent unauthorized users from connecting? Is it to avoid revealing the router brand and model? Or is it to enable faster connection speeds? And the correct answer is it is to avoid revealing the router brand and model. So changing the default SSID, this helps prevent giving away information about the router, such as this brand or model, which could be exploited by attackers looking for known vulnerabilities. It is a basic step to enhance network security, but does not by itself prevent unauthorized access.
Next question, which encryption protocol offers the highest level of security for a wireless network? Is it WEP, WPA, WPA2, or WPA3? And of course, the answer is going to be WPA3. So this is the latest and most secure encryption protocol for wireless networks. It offers enhanced protection over WPA2, particularly on public networks, and provides better encryption methods to safeguard data in transit. WPA and WEP, they are older protocols with a bunch of vulnerabilities. And our final question, what is the recommended action after setting up a new wireless router for the first time? Is it enabling web encryption? Is it changing the default admin username and password? Is it disabling the SSID broadcast for better performance? Or is it setting the SSID to default for easier identification? And the correct answer is changing the default admin username and password. So it is critical to change the default admin username and password immediately after setting up a new router to prevent unauthorized access. Many default credentials are publicly known, making the network vulnerable to attacks if left unchanged.